Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video I will be talking about Deshaun Watson and why the Washington football team will not be able to trade for him. There's a bunch of reasons but there was a recent report that came out from John Kime that Deshaun Watson would not waive his no trade clause to come here to Washington. So I'll talk about that and I'll talk about how this affects Washington's search for their quarterback of the future. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content. Hit that like button and turn on those notifications. It really, really helps out the channel. I'm trying to get to 6,500 subscribers. So help me get there. Also, go ahead and follow my Twitter. It's right here. Also, link in the description to make sure you guys go ahead and check out WinView. Let's get right into the video. I think we all knew it would be a long shot for the Washington football team to be able to land quarterback Deshaun Watson from the Houston Texans. I mean, there's just so many reasons. One of the reasons is that, you know, asking price is was very, very high. And, I, you know, Washington definitely had the pieces to make the trade, but there's definitely other teams with more appealing offers with, you know, multiple first round picks, multiple high first round picks. So Washington just didn't have that. They had other aspects, some good defensive players, which, they, you know, Houston Texans wanted. But that's just one of the, you know, reasons. Another reason is, you know, Deshaun Watson has so many allegations against him right now. And we don't know if he's innocent or guilty, but that's the main reason. You know, that's one of the main reasons right there. You can't necessarily trade for someone where you don't know if he's going to be available for the next few years. And the optics with the Washington football team just aren't good with everything going around, you know, with Washington and, you know, the workplace environment in the last few years. It just wouldn't look good if Washington would have made a trade and Deshaun Watson wasn't cleared. I was always in the camp of I'm fine with trading for Deshaun Watson. I just want to wait until everything is cleared before we were, you know, able to make a trade because you just don't want that uncertainty hanging on your head. And another reason why it was always a long shot is, you know, maybe Deshaun Watson didn't want to come here. And John Kime reported on his podcast. Make sure you guys go ahead and check that out. Sorry, check that out. It was a mailbag podcast, you know, answered a bunch of different questions. And he was talking about Deshaun Watson. And he said on his podcast that from what he's heard leading up to this point is that Deshaun Watson would not waive his no trade clause to come here. So that pretty much rules out Deshaun Watson coming to Washington unless things change. Maybe, you know, he sees something differently here, but just I don't. I don't think it's going to happen. There's, you know, some cities he wants to go to. I think Miami is one of his top destinations. There's some other ones as well, but Sean Watson coming to D.C. is a long shot. And, you know, it would have been nice if he was cleared and, you know, we were able to trade from. I mean, he's like 24, 25 years old. He's an elite quarterback. You look at last year, 2020 had a 70 percent completion percentage, 4,800 23 passing yards, had 33 touchdowns and seven interceptions. And then he also had 444 rushing yards with three touchdowns. Just a complete player. And it would have been nice to have him on the team. Again, everything I'm saying here is if he was cleared of everything eventually but it's not going to be the case let's hope he you know doesn't end up on the Eagles because the Eagles with Deshaun Watson or any team you know in our division with Deshaun Watson I would not like to see that but it looks like it'll it might be the Dolphins maybe the Panthers but I'm not sure why Deshaun Watson would waive his no trade clause to go to Carolina they've been a mess lately but that rules out one of the guys that you know a lot of fans were going after and, you know, it's going to be hard for Washington to land their franchise quarterback this season, uh, this offseason, especially if they're going in, you know, free agents or not free agency, but, you know, the veteran trade kind of route. If they want to go towards that, it's going to be really tough because obviously, you know, Rodgers is a huge, huge long shot. He, first of all, pr might not even leave Green Bay. And if he does, he will not want to come to Washington. He likely wants to go to the West Coast and he wants to go to a team that is set up right away. And I just, that's just not Washington right now. Obviously, they would be one of the better teams in the NFL with Rodgers, but that's a lot of teams. A lot of teams, you know, you put Aaron Rodgers on their team, they're one of the better teams in the NFL. But that is, I'm not even really considering Aaron Rodgers because I just think there's really no chance. You look at Russell Wilson, there's more of a chance because I do think. There is a solid chance he leaves Seattle 
this season and then that's you know the question will he be willing to come to washington that i don't know obviously a lot of these you know agents probably advise their players you know you don't really want to go to a team that's owned by dan snyder and i think russell wilson is smart he's been in the league for a while now and he probably wouldn't want to come here with dan snyder as the owner even though he was born in Virginia, or I, I know he grew up here, and you know, it would be a nice, obviously, reuni reunion. Bring Russell Wilson to DC. He's my number one option, but doesn't look like it's gonna happen. It's it's a it's a long shot, but definitely the most realistic out of Watson, Rodgers, and Wilson. Uh, and then Derek Carr, I think, is the most realistic guy that Washington, big name guy that Washington could land this offseason because the Raiders and him might split up this, you know, offseason with the Raiders likely hiring a new head coach, maybe a new GM as well. They might want to start, you know, off fresh, new, um, new era, you know, moving past from everything, you know, moving on from everything that's been going on the last few years. There was a clip that, you know, Derek Carr said that he rather, you know, if he was traded or let go, he would, you know, rather retire than, you know, play on any other team other than the Raiders. I think he's just saying that to, you know, I, I don't know. I don't necessarily buy that. That's all I'm saying right there. But Derek Carr is the one that's the most realistic. But the thing is, are you willing to pay him a ton of money? And then also, how much are you willing to give up? Because it's going to take a first plus something. I would not give up two firsts for him, but I would probably give up a first and a player or a mid-round pick, something like that, you know, a third-round pick. I'm really not sure at this moment, but Derek Carr is somewhat intriguing to me. And then after that, you could look at someone like Tua Tagovailoa. I'm not a huge fan of Tua, but, you know, Tua's been solid this year for the Dolphins, you know, he has a super, super high completion percentage. The problem with Tua is I don't see a super high ceiling with him. I see a guy that's going to be an average quarterback for a long time, maybe a little bit better than average. Another problem with him is the injuries. He is very, very injury prone in college, had that hip injury, had, you know, multiple ankle, lower leg injuries. And then also in the NFL, he's had a bunch of hand, you know, injuries, uh, just a bunch of different injuries. And that kind of scares me, but I would not be upset if I, we gave up like a mid round pick for him, like a third, maybe, I, maybe a little bit more. But the thing with Tua is if you trade for him, then, you know, you don't know necessarily that he's going to be, uh, you know, average or above average guy or even a franchise guy. And you're going to, you know, only have two years left of, you know, that rookie contract. So you might as well just spend a first round pick on one of these guys, Kenny Pickett, Matt Corral, you know, any of those guys, you know, maybe Malik Willis, Sam Howell, Desmond Ritter in the late first round as well, because you're going to have five years on that rookie contract and you won't really have to, well, you're going to use that first round pick, but you won't have to give up like a second and then, you know, only have two years of eligibility that's just something I want you guys to let me know in the comments section below. Would you rather go after, you know, a veteran guy? If you do, who do you think, you know, Washington would realistically be able to land? And then after that, if you don't want to go the veteran route, who would you want to draft this year in the first round? Would it, would it be Kenny Pickett, Matt Corral? I mean, there's a bunch of different options in the first round. No, like, clear-cut first option but there's definitely a bunch of different options so thank you guys for watching the video hope you guys enjoyed it and again let me know which quarterback you want washington to go after this offseason gonna be a lot of quarterback talk on this channel and yeah thanks for watching happy new year guys and peace